Hi, it's Summer, and these are my favorite books of 2022. This year was when I came back to booktube and bookstagram after like a two year break. It's been so fun to talk about books on the internet again and I've just like loved making friends with so many people. I'm just so thankful for all of you and I love this community so much. So aside from those things making this year so awesome, this was also my best reading year that I've ever had. As of right now, I've read 82 books, which is the most I've ever read before. And I think that I might be able to fit one or two more in before the end of the year. I'm currently like halfway through an audiobook, so I might have 83, which is crazy to me. The most I've ever read before this, I think, was like in the 70s, but that was years ago. The past couple of years, I haven't even come close to that, so this is very exciting for me. I'm really happy. I'm going to save my favorite books for last. I think like my top three are the only ones that I can really like say for sure are my top three books. The rest of these are just kind of like, I couldn't put them in order, but just know that they're some of my favorite books that I read this year. So the first book that I have to show you is Garlic and the Vampire by Sarah Paulson. This was a big year for graphic novels for me and this one is one of my favorites that I read. This book is about garlic. She's very anxious so I think a lot of people will be able to relate to her character. I know that I did but she has all of these other like vegetable friends that were all animated by this witch and they help her harvest her garden and one day they find out that a vampire has moved in kind of close to their town and they send garlic to go and defeat him because garlic is like a vampire's weakness. She is just the sweetest little hero. I love her. And this was just a really cute, quick, easy read. I love the illustrations and it's the perfect book to read around like the fall. After that, I have A Merry Little Meet Cute by Julie Murphy and Sierra Simone. This one is a Christmas rom-com and it follows B, who is an adult film star, but she wants to start doing like real movies and stuff. So she gets this opportunity to be in a movie, but it's for this network called The Hope Channel, which is basically like the equivalent of the Hallmark Channel. So because this is kind of like a family friendly project that she's working on, she can't let anybody know what her profession is. She's also starring alongside her like teenage crush, who's this guy who was part of a boy band years ago. And so her teenage self is kind of swooning and she's a little bit starstruck and they have immediate chemistry. This book was just so funny. I laughed out loud so many times. Some of the jokes are a little bit cringy, but like I was here for it. <laughs> I love that it had like fat plus size rep in it. I love the like conversations that it had around that and like how it pertained to society and the entertainment industry. Sorry, my cats are eating right now. So that's what you're hearing in the background. It was also just like such a fun read. Like I just really enjoyed this and I read it super fast because of that. I really loved the audiobook too and the female narrator especially. I thought that she fit B perfectly and I also just really liked how she read the book to us. I also loved that this was so sex positive and stuff. There's a lot about the porn industry in this one because of B's job. And some of that aspect of this book was a little bit heavy handed and some of like the sex stuff was a little bit unrealistic, but it really didn't take away too much from my enjoyment of the book. This is also one of like the steamiest books I've ever read. Not that it's like that crazy or that there are like so many sex scenes or anything like that, but they were just written really, really well and I really enjoyed it. <laughs> After that, I have another graphic novel, and that is Moon Cakes. It's by Wendy Zhu, Suzanne Walker, and Joel Metgill. This is just such a cute, warm, cozy, magical, queer graphic novel. It follows Nova and Tam, who are a witch and a werewolf. They were childhood friends, and they're kind of starting to rekindle their relationship while also fighting some demons. <laughs> the vibes in this book were so perfect. The illustrations in this one are beautiful. It's just like the perfect fall book. And I think that it's gonna be one that I end up rereading every fall. After that, I have a thriller. This is My Lovely Wife by Samantha Downing. This one is about a husband and wife who kill people together to kind of like keep their marriage alive and interesting. <laughs> Things start to go very wrong though. And this, it, it was just such a crazy story. I was hooked from the first chapter and could not stop reading this. And I was already really enjoying like the book itself, but the ending is what really sold it for me as a favorite book of the year. It was just so good. After that, I have another thriller, and that is Verity by Colleen Hoover. I've said this before, and I will say it again. Um, I don't think you should read the bonus chapter <laughs> that's in this edition. It kind of like ruined it a little bit for me, but this is still a favorite of the year for sure. This one is about a struggling author. Her name is Lowen, and one day she gets the opportunity of a lifetime to kind of ghostwrite the rest of a series for this author named Verity, who is no longer able to finish the series that she started. In order to get more insight into like the plans that Verity had for this book series, she goes to Verity's home and is like going through her um, office and stuff, trying to find like notes and things that she'd written about the series and ends up finding this unpublished manuscript that Verity wrote. 
and what is written in it is very concerning. <laughs> this is another one that just had me like so hooked from the first chapter. I loved that it had like the romance kind of like steamy element to it as well. The ending of this one is a little bit info dumpy in my opinion, but I still really enjoyed this. And for anybody wondering, I think that I'm team manuscript. If you know, you know. Next is A Magic Steeped in Poison by Judy Eileen. This one is an Asian inspired fantasy about a magic system that revolves around tea. In this kingdom or country that the main character Ning lives in, there have been some recent tea poisonings. Her mother was one of the people that was affected by it, so she's recently passed away, and Ning's younger sister is slowly dying of that same poison. I always struggle with this part of the synopsis, so I'm just gonna read it. <laughs> when Ning hears of a competition to find the kingdom's greatest master of the ancient and magical art of tea making, she travels to the imperial city to compete. The winner will receive a favor from the princess, which may be Ning's only chance to save her sister's life. The magic system in this book was the main thing that made me want to read it. It's so unique and so fun to read about. The way that it's described is awesome. The way that it presents itself is really different from person to person that uses the magic. So I loved hearing all the descriptions of when everybody would use them. And the politics are definitely what's keeping me excited to read the next book. After that, I have Take a Hint Danny Brown by Talia Hibbert. This year I completed the Brown Sister series. This one follows Danny, who is a professor, I believe, and Zaf, who is a security guard at the university that she works at. The fire alarm goes off or something in the university and Danny gets like stuck inside. Zaf ends up like rescuing her from it and like carrying her outside and a bunch of people film it and they become kind of like an internet sensation. They go a little bit viral. And Zaf has a nonprofit that they kind of like need more money for. So ever since this big like media thing has been happening, his nonprofit has been getting more like attention and stuff. So him and Danny decide that they're going to fake date and do like interviews and stuff to kind of keep that momentum going. I love their chemistry together. I love their banter. And it is also very steamy. I love Talia Hibbert's romance books. I need to read more of them. Now we're kind of getting into like the more favorite favorites. So I think that I like these books just a little tiny, tiny bit more than the ones I just talked about. This one is Feelings, A Story in Seasons by Manjit Thop. This is like a poetry graphic novel. It's semi-autobiographical and it just follows the feelings of this person throughout the seasons and like their mental health and stuff. So I didn't even hear about this like on Bookstagram or anything. I heard about this straight from the author herself and knew that I had to get it just because I love her art style so much. This book is genuinely one of the most beautiful books that I own. The colors that she uses in this kind of change season to season and that's how the book is broken up is like summer, fall, winter, that kind of a thing. The poetry that's in here is beautiful. I related so much to so many of the things that she said in here. There were a couple parts of this book that actually made me like kind of tear up a little bit and I was not expecting that going into this book. I just highly recommend this, especially if you're like a creative artistic person because there's a lot of those themes kind of explored in this as well. I just really, really loved this and I got a lot out of it. Next, I have Comfort Me With Apples by Catherine M. Valenti. I think that this one is technically a horror novel and it's a shorter book too and I loved it. It is one of the most creative and unique stories that I have ever read. It's about this woman who lives in a community that is very like kind of restrictive and controlling. And there are definitely like some secrets and things that she's not aware of. The ending of this book was like 10 out of 10, a masterpiece. I loved it. If you like weird horror and beautiful writing, you absolutely have to read this. After that, I have The Bridge Kingdom by Danielle L. Jensen. This is a high fantasy novel about the main character who has been trained her whole life to be an assassin and a spy, and she is being married off to this rival country. Her job is to infiltrate them, find out their information, and figure out like their weak points so that the country that she comes from can attack them. But of course, there's a romance, there are secrets being kept, and I kind of don't know how more people aren't talking about this book. In my opinion, it's really close up there with like Sarah J. Mass's writing and stuff, so if you're a fan of that type of fantasy, you definitely would like this. I really love the characters and I loved the world. I felt like I could really vividly see everything that was being described to me. The stakes definitely feel high in this one and the main character, Laura, is just like a badass. I love her. It's definitely a favorite book of the year. I'm so excited to continue in the series and you need to read this one if you like fantasy. After that, I have Love Light Farms by BK Borison. This is a holiday romance set on a Christmas tree farm. It's friends to lovers, which I'm finding is one of my favorite tropes. I love the chemistry and the history that you can feel between the two main characters. They've known each other for like 10 years and you can definitely feel that with how they talk to each other and how they act around each other. Also just like the Christmas vibes in this book were perfect and there are cats in it. It was just such a sweet book and I just really enjoyed it. Next, I have Our Wives Under the Sea by Julie Armfield. This is one that I just barely finished a couple of days ago, so I'm so glad I read it in time to include it on this list because I loved it and I kind of had a feeling that I would love it before I even picked it up. I would describe this one as like a soft melancholic horror 
This is about Mary and Leah. Leah is some kind of like marine biologist or like oceanographer kind of person. And she has just recently returned home to her wife, Mary, after being gone for like six months on a deep sea exploration that went wrong. Leah is not the same and she's changing every day and Mary is just trying to like figure out what actually happened to her while she was in the ocean. This was just such a weird kind of like sad book. It explored a lot of like themes of grief and stuff, but there is also kind of like a little splash of horror in it that I really enjoyed. After that, I have Bunny by Mona Awad. This is such a polarizing book. I have friends that absolutely hate this one, but I gave it five stars. If you want weird horror, this is definitely it. This whole thing is a trip. It's a fever dream. You don't know what's happening a lot of the time, but that's kind of why it's so great. <laughs> At this university that the main character Sam is going to, there's a group of girls that everybody calls the bunnies because they call each other bunny, they dress really different than everybody else, they talk really different, and Sam kind of gets welcomed into the group by the bunnies. And you just get to hear about her weird experience being in this group with them. But the bunnies really remind me of the Chanel's from Scream Queens, like especially how they dress and stuff. I loved the writing style and I also really loved the ending. I did not see it coming. I forgot to grab the next book from my bookshelves, but it's Zodiac Academy and not even really like one of the books in particular, just like the whole series. I read most of the series this year and it's one that I really enjoy, even though it has terrible writing. It needs an editor really bad. It's a little bit cringy and probably a little bit problematic, but I'm just like absolutely in love with the world and the characters. Everything is based around like your Zodiac sign. There's a lot of like crystals and tarot and stuff like that. I'm kind of starting to feel like the series has been dragged out a little bit too much at this point. And I also just don't think I can handle any more abuse from these authors. But even having said that, I really love this series. I'm excited to continue in it. And it's just definitely been like a favorite set of books that I've read this year. After that, I have Heartstopper by Alice Oseman. I know that this one is so popular, so I probably don't really need to explain too much of it, but I love this so much. <laughs> I love Nick and Charlie's just sweet little relationship that they have. I could not stop smiling while I was reading this and the other books in the series that are out. I relate so much to Nick and I just like am so thankful for this book. I just love it. I also love the Netflix adaptation. So good. After that, I have Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry. This is a sapphic cozy fantasy. This is the coziest book you will ever read. The main character Viv is an orc that used to be a fighter and stuff, but she's decided to put down her sword and open up a coffee shop. And you just get to hear the story of her building this coffee shop, coming up with the menu, meeting all the people in her community. And it just made me so happy. I loved this book. It's definitely worth the hype. After that, I have Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. This is about Alex Stern who has kind of like a dark backstory. She can see ghosts and she gets wrapped up in a secret society at Yale University. The dark academia vibes were 10 out of 10. I love Alex's character. I loved hearing about her and about like her backstory and stuff. This book did get a little bit confusing with all of the different like secret societies and stuff and like keeping people's names straight, but that's not stopping it from being a favorite of this year. Okay, so now we're to my top three. These are like my absolute favorite books that I read this year. This one is Just Like Home by Sarah Gailey. I know that this one is so polarizing. I know a lot of people that really did not enjoy this book, but I really loved it. This is about the main character named Vera who is coming home to take care of her mom. The only thing that we really know going in is that her and her mom are not on good terms and that something bad happened at this childhood home that Vera is returning to. This book has a trope that is, I guess, one of my new favorite tropes because all three of my top favorite books of the year have this trope in it, but it's where a daughter returns back somewhere after her father has kept secrets from her. This was just such a weird horror story and I loved the ending. My second favorite book of the year is The Cartographers by Pung Shepherd. This book, I love it. This is about Nell who had a falling out with her father years ago and they haven't been in contact since. They're both cartographers. Her dad worked at the New York Public Library and she was an intern there until an incident happened and he fired her. And that's why they haven't talked in a long time. Her father has been found dead at his office though. So she has to return to the New York Public Library. This has all of the magical realism, dark academia vibes. It has the trope of a father keeping secrets. It has a map that every single copy that exists of it has been either destroyed or stolen. It's also dual POV and like dual timeline, which I also really loved. I just haven't heard a ton of people talking about this one. And there are a couple of things that I didn't love about it, but everything that I loved about it just cancels those things out. This was just such an intriguing, interesting, unique, creative book. 
It's one that I just think about all the time and it's definitely a new favorite for this year, but also just a new all-time favorite. So now we're to my number one favorite book of this year and that is Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. This is one that I read back in June, I think, maybe July, but it has just stuck with me. It was basically a perfect book. I could not put it down. It was so good. It has the trope, daughter returning home after her dad kept secrets from her. This is about Maggie who is returning home to this place called Bainberry Hall. Her father just died and he left it to her in his will, but she thought all the way up until inheriting it that he had sold this property. Her family only lived in this house for maybe like a month before they fled in the middle of the night because everything that was happening there was just so bad and creepy and haunting. After that night, her dad wrote a book about their experience and it became really popular. It got a ton of publicity and because of that, Maggie her whole life has just kind of been attached to this house and this story even though she doesn't want to. She doesn't believe that it was haunted so she is going to return back to Bainberry Hall and renovate it and then flip it and sell it. But when she's there she starts kind of like uncovering some things and some creepy things start happening to her. But if that storyline wasn't already enough we also get chapters from her dad's book and it was just so good. The pacing was amazing. Creepiness 10 out of 10. There was a scene that happened in this book that I literally was kind of like cringing away from my book, like reading between my fingers kind of a thing. I'm obsessed with it. I keep thinking about it. It is 1000% my favorite book of the year. I had such a good reading year. I think this is like my favorite reading year that I've ever had. I read so many awesome books as you've seen. And I also just had the best year in this community. Let me know in the comments if one of my favorite books was one of your least favorite books because that's always fun. <laughs> also let me know like what one of your favorite books of the year was. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.